Welcome back to Vault Hunters Academy. And today we are picking up where we left last time, with these pouches over here. So, how do these pouches work? First off, they will come with the Void Upgrade and the Pickup Upgrade. And that is Pickup Upgrade. It will automatically pick items from the ground and put them into the pouch. Not with a magnet, but just as you go over them with your normal pickup range. And for the Void Upgrade, if you pick up an item that would go over the maximum limit of the slot it is slotted to, it will void the item, just so that it doesn't clog up the rest of the inventory slots. Now this first one only has the space of one chest. Now if we go into the research tab, more specifically into looting, you can see you need to unlock the next tier of pouches. You normally only have the right to basic pouches, and after that you need to use knowledge to unlock them. Not only that, you can also unlock upgrades to the pouches you have. Stack upgrades make it so you can make, well, stack upgrades that allow you to increase the number of items one slot of these ones over here can take. And you can go from the first tier of stack upgrade that doubles the amount of items one slot can take from 64 to 128, up to the stack upgrade tier 4 that is the netherite one, that will let you have 16 times the amount of items in one slot, meaning that one of these slots can have up to 1024. Now for the next tier of pouches. First off, you have the double pouch that increases the size to basically what is a double chest. Then you get another three more rows for the loot belt and so on and so forth. The small backpack it will expand a bit more on that. And lastly, you have the big backpack that is the biggest of them all. And if you did notice, let me take up the first pouch. Now, it only has two upgrade slots. However, the big backpack has seven of them. And that is because the upgrade slots increase in every expansion of the backpack, except double pouches into load belts, as you only have three in each of them. But after that, you get five and then seven. So it's not too bad. But as I said, to unlock further than a pouch, you need to have research, meaning you need to go into vaults and it's not like you're gonna have them from the start and I'm doing this lessons to teach you how to get to looting and how to get to playing the game from the start. So first off, one thing you need to note is the best way to use this backpack is by coming into the backpack settings, slot memory settings, and after that you need to research over here on your JI, for example, let me say bronze, because this is something that you'll get a lot in the vault. So you left click and press, you see it is getting green instead of the backpack and the blue line connecting this bronze from there to here. And as you can see, it now appears gray out. You can add more stuff. Let me just show you an example backpack. In my opinion, this is a pretty decent layout for your first backpack. I'm gonna make a list of everything I have over here if you want to copy it because while there is a way to save and load settings from one backpack to another I don't think that it is possible for you to save from one client to another or from one player to another if I do find a way I'll try to make a quick video or short on it but I don't think there is also you can simply and select all slots will basically Wipe out everything you have over here, and if you have items on the backpack and you want to save them, you just need to select all slots. But once you have this done, you go to the pickup settings and need to do match backpack content. This by itself does stop other items from entering the backpack and on will only allow these ones. However, I find it this to be the better way, especially if you end up with any empty slot. But again, you can only ever go into these pouches after you go into a few vaults first because even if you want to craft another one as you can see they are pretty expensive so for a little while you're gonna be using shulker boxes also something to note is that you don't need to have pouches in your inventory you can simply put them in your back slot in your curios so just click on this setting over here and then go into back and place there your pouch that you want in that place. But looting is not only about managing your inventory. So I have these three stations over here, that being the tool station, 
the jewel cutting station and the jewel applicator. And these three stations are gonna help me a lot in creating the tools we need to go and start loading. The first thing you need is your tool. And honestly, if it is to break chests, I do recommend you to craft a chromatic iron sickle. The same as is recommended in this vault tools quest. However, this quest is only over here and to get to it, you need to complete a bounty. But I think this quest should be moved down a bit to before the expertise ones, because honestly, you can create this object with items from outside of the vault mostly, but Driftwood is very easy to find. So the vault tool and the jewel applicator also being very easy, just needing Driftwood and a gemstone so that you can find in any gilded chest or most of them. Well, I think it's easy enough to make after your first vault. So the quest should be moved a bit down. But now what do we do with this sickle? Well, we place them in the jewel applicator and you have information here called capacity that is over 200. But that is for now because as you level up the level 20, for example, you unlock a tool that has 150. And after that, every unlock is 50 more capacity from the previous. But how do you use this capacity? Easy, with gems. However, how do you get gems? First off, they can be found inside of yellow chests. You can receive them by completing rewards inside of the bounty table, or you can also buy them inside of the black market, for example, like this. And as you can see, when looking at the jewels, in the implicit, you have size, and that is the amount of capacity of the tool that it will use. And then you have the suffixes or prefixes, but either way, it doesn't matter much. So, as you can see, suffixes and prefixes change a lot between them, and you can see exactly what the jewel can roll inside of the Vault Hunters.gg site. In the gear menu, you can go into jewels, control the levels, and see what range and what implicit suffix prefix your jewel can roll. And this goes for every type of gear. And I do recommend you use that site as much as you can, as, as much as you want. Anyway, right now, I want to see what is important for me to make my first tool. So stuff like this, trap design will become important later. But until level 15, you don't get traps from the chests in the vault, so you don't need to take it. And the most important thing is the affinities, because you won't have much space in your capacity now for your first tool to also add item quantity or item rarity so you have your sickle and then you're gonna want to give coin affinity gilded affinity ornate affinity living affinity and some people tend to put wooden affinity in a tool that has axing but i think the sickle works well enough and that is because you cannot instant break chests that are wooden because you need a high amount of mining speed to do that. So just know you won't be able to mine wooden chests instantly, but that doesn't matter as you will see later. Also looking at jewels, much like gear, well, sometimes there are pieces of jewels that appear with that star next to one of its modifiers. And that is because this piece of gear, or jewel in this case, is a legendary jewel, meaning that it holds a uh, amount of item quantity in this case that is higher what a jewel of its level can actually hold. So pay attention to legendaries because they are very good and your best tools will come from gems that have a lot of legendaries. But anyway, let's pick these four jewels and add them to our sickle. And as you can see, I still have 14 capacity and the minimum size for a jewel is 10. So if I really wanted to, I can come and get a bit of gold, throw it in the jewel cutting station alongside some silver scrap, and then I can get one jewel. Let's pick this one, for example, that has two suffixes and throw it inside of the jewel cutting station. Well, size is 22. It doesn't really fit inside of the tool that I have over here because I only have 14. So I can go into this hammer over here inside of the jewel cutting station and click it once. It will lose one of its modifiers because every time you click on this one, it will lose one of the modifiers, but it can also hold between one and four and reduce that number it holds from the total size of the jewel. It was 22 size, now it's 18. I hold a four, so it, hit, uh, so it took four from the maximum size. But if it is already at only one modifier and you click to cut the jewel once more, you will lose the jewel and instead will get a gemstone. You'll be able to use with vault gold 
jewels and silver scrap alongside Wood Tie Gems to create new jewels, trying to roll for one that has better modifiers. But now that we have the tool ready to craft with all the modifiers that we need, it's a shame that it has picking because I didn't want to use it, but oh well, we can simply apply the jewels. And now, as you can see, it changed form because we've added picking and it also has all the modifiers and affinities we need for it to truly be our first chest breaking tool. And with that, you're honestly pretty much ready to go and do some vaults. So let me just show you how good these tools with affinities are. But don't forget to enchant them. All tools can still be enchanted according to the tools they are. So this one is basically one tool. So you can have efficiency, you can have fortune, you can have soft touch and then breaking. And fortune well might be tempting because oh more loot. It's not how it works because only item quantity and rarity increase or what you get inside of the chests. So yeah, that's not really important. So you'll just need efficiency. You can take fortune if you want the set of mind of, well, why not let it be at least a lucky enchantment for myself. And also want unbreaking because you don't want the tool to break soon because 4,000 durability, oh, it goes fast. It goes really fast. And I said you can go into a vault. And right now that is completely true. However, after level 21, you get copiously that starts being able to hold on tools. And this only happens after level 21, as you can check inside of the Vault Hunter.gg page. And this copiously basically only works on, on pickaxes because, well, this copiously is a chance to drop the results you get from mining ore. So let's say you find a block of Larimar ore. If you break it, normally you'll only have one block of Larimar if you go into it with a Silk Touch pickaxe. However, with a fortune, you can get between 0 and 4 Larimar. However, if you have copiously, copiously is a chance to double that result. Meaning that if you break a ore with copiously, there is a chance that you'll get two ores if you break it with the pick with Silk Touch. However, if you break it with a fortune, there is a chance to roll between 0 and Four in the same way. However, if you hold a four, you'll get eight. If you hold a three, you'd get six, two, four, one, two, and zero, still zero. So yeah, it basically doubles the result of your previous breaking of the ore. Still only after level 21, so doesn't matter right now. As this is for your first two, but it's good to keep in mind because you'll want, want to upgrade your tools as soon as possible anyway to add more jewels to them. So let's go inside of the vault and try our tool alongside our pouch. However, in your first vaults, always good to bring a few shulkers with you, if at all possible. Wooden chests are the most unique of all the loot inside of the vault in terms of looting with your tool. And that is because once you break them, it will explode and everything inside will come out like a normal chest would. So nothing different there. But why is it different from the rest? It's different in that these types of chests don't work like normal chests. Once you break them, it will drop one of the loot inside and another, but they break instantly. And with this, I mean, each hit you give with your tool will take one item and it is instantaneous. So you can just press the left click and there goes all the loot. So they are a bit faster than the wooden chest because they at they are instant. That goes for the living that I just broke. For the ornate. However, if sometimes you'll see that it goes a bit slower, you just need to press on any nearby block. And after it goes like this to instantaneous. For example, and as you can see, it is not going well. I just go to the side and once again instantaneously break the chest that you have affinity to. But it's not only the chest that it can break instantaneously, it can also do so with the gold or the coin piles that you'll find. But it is a bit annoying that after you break any chest, the loot goes onto the floor and you need to go and pick it up. That is why this piece of gear exists, the magnet, and it can be found like any other piece of gear inside of 
ornate chests. And once you unroll the magnet, you can go and place it in your belt slot. And any items that, uh, that are on the floor will come to you. It is not instant. They have travel time. And magnets also have a range that you need to keep in mind. And you can see them by hovering over it with shift to see everything they have. And as you can see, this one also has item quantity that also adds to the, to the amount of items that you'll find inside of the chests. Because you can not only have item quantity and rarity in your tools, but also in basically any piece of gear that is defensive or your magnet. Not only that, but in, inside your keybinds, if you go to magnet, there is a way to turn the magnet on or off. In my case, I bound it to the iPhone but you can bound it to whatever you want. And after that, you press it, it turns off the magnet. And that would mean that if I throw this off, it does not come to me. I throw it on and it slowly comes to me. But that will be all about today's lesson about looting. And I'll see you tomorrow with a lesson on getting yourself up. So, see you tomorrow.